Hello and welcome back to another update where we cover the latest developments throughout the front line. Starting out in the direction in Bakhmut, we see that the Ukrainian forces managed to advance slightly here to the east of Khrushchevka, where they continue the fighting over the high grounds to the east of Khrushchevka, and their Ukrainian forces now have control over half of it. And with this, we see that the Russians are slowly being pushed back beyond the railways and away from the high grounds. So the fighting continues in the direction of the railways across the whole area between Klyshevka and down to Kuryomivka, where the Ukrainian forces have not yet been able to break through after the fighting reached this area last month. So we're seeing some fighting continues here, and it excused the map overlay because there was an issue when I was doing the mapping, and there's a bug, and I can't move the Russian map for some reason. As you can see, there's no blobs to move the map, like if I use, choose the Ukrainian side, there's a blob, I can move it to fix the map, but here there's nothing, so I can only physically move it, and that doesn't allow me to edit the map, so there's no way to edit the Russian side, so there's going to be something like this, but know that once I have the recap on, then that is what counts. But with this, we see that the Ukrainian offensive operations to the south of Bakhmut has not ended. We then move on to the Avdivka area where the Russian offensive continues. Yesterday they managed to advance in the direction of Stepove and in the direction of Avdivka itself with the capture of the coke plant. So fighting continues in this direction and we have uh, these two located pictures from Deep State Map which shows Russian armored vehicles at the very outskirts of the railways and we also see some in the quarry area. So the general situation around here is that the Russian forces are continuously attempting to break through the railways to push on to the villages of Stepova and Beredishi, capturing the high grounds to the north of the village before entering them, getting a foothold and pushing out the Ukrainian forces, which seems to be their aim here to the northern flank of Avdivka. As for the southern parts, we have seen some developments in the direction of Odiane, but starting out in the direction of the south of Avdivka, there's a slight change. The Russian forces managed to capture the startings of the trenches here, but they don't have control over the ones here to the east, which is shown by my map yesterday. And this has been corrected with the recap map, but unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, I cannot fix the red part of the map yet until I fix whatever issue this is. But the fighting continues here to the south of the city with heavy fighting over the trench networks to the south of Avdivka. This whole network of trenches to the south of the city is very intense and according to the fighters on the ground, it is almost impossible to pass through, but the Russian forces are trying to push their best through the southern parts of the city to try and draw in the Ukrainian forces defending the city to this area so that they can focus on the operations to the north, because if the Ukrainians do not respond to this threat to the south and instead focus all their forces in the flanks, then they will end in a situation where the Russians can get a foothold in these trenches and threaten Avdivka directly from the southern direction. If they neglect the flanks, then they will essentially just get encircled, so they have to balance out between defending the south and the flanks. As for the Vodiane area, we see two spearheads by Russian forces. The first one is to the east of Vodiane, where after the Ukrainian forces managed to capture this area here, the Russian forces now see the threat to Vodiane and therefore they counterattack to prevent the Ukrainian forces from advancing further. We also see fighting here in the northern parts where the Russian forces managed to advance this part here and now continues the fighting in the direction of Severne. So there are some more trench networks here that are not shown by the satellite images as the satellite images are old. But essentially we see that the Ukrainian forces have built fortifications here to prevent a Russian breakthrough. And this is where they are confronting the Russian forces to try and prevent their advancements here to the southern flank of Avdivka. Moving on to the Saporizhia front, we see here that the Ukrainian forces continue their fights here to the west of Robotin in the direction of Kopani. So the Ukrainian forces managed to advance a small part earlier this month and now they have advanced yet again. A smaller distance but they have advanced nonetheless in the direction of Kopani. So when I report on this earlier my theory was that the Ukrainian forces are looking to advance in the direction of the flanks of their balls that they've created here to the south of Novodanilivka. They're currently attacking on the sides rather than down to the south and the reason for this is that they see unlikely 
possibilities of them breaking through the first main defensive line of the Russian forces. They instead are looking to try and hold their current positions and for that they need to expand it to prevent the Russian forces from closing the bulge and essentially surrounding and cancelling all of the Ukrainian positions that they gained throughout the offensive. So they're looking to hold their gains and to do that they're looking to capture Kopani, Rivne and Novopokrovka. So these are most likely the targets of the ongoing Ukrainian offensive here in the south which is currently moving very slow. And then there's this article here written by France 24 from a AFP journalist who has talked with some of the Ukrainian soldiers on the front line. And here they talk about how this whole thing went wrong in the Ukrainian offensive. They start out with when Ukraine announced it had recaptured the village of Robotene, its message to the world was that it had found a way to pierce Russian lines on the southern front. However, six weeks on, no such breakthrough has materialized and soldiers from the 65th Brigade that led the assault admit they do not fully control the village. This is because although I have it under control of the Ukrainian forces, the Ukrainians essentially have no presence in the southern parts of Robotene. They are mostly moving through here to the east and to the south of the village in the trenches but the village itself they do not have control over due to the fact that they cannot send their troops in it without the Russian forces bombarding those positions. So they are very vulnerable within it. We then see further on, the recapture of the small village in the Zaporizhia region was announced in August as a strategic victory in the counteroffensive. Yet eight Ukrainian soldiers involved in the fighting told AFP their forces were only inching forward with heavy losses against a Russian army entrenched behind heavily fortified positions, which is what I've been saying for months. And then we have some people who do not believe me because it doesn't fit the narrative. But here we have a journalist who's talked with the soldiers on the Ukrainian side and they admit the reality, which I've been reporting on for months. Speaking in an area usually close to media, the complaint of a lack of manpower, ammunition and drones, so they're not even fully equipped while fighting in this very tough part of the front line. I'm not saying that it is easy to break through the Russian lines, it is definitely the opposite. It is very difficult, almost impossible. As we have seen, the Ukrainian forces have been stuck with the first line of defense and have not really gotten any breakthrough since the start of the offensive, which started on June 4th and today is the 13th of October. So four and a half months essentially and they have not managed to break through the Russian defensive lines. He talks about how the announcement of the capture of Robotene on August 28th was primarily a PR move, since the village occupied since early in the war has no strategic value. While the whole Western media is telling you that Robotene is the village, this is going to have everything go well for Ukraine, and then he claims it has no strategic value. In my personal opinion, it does because the Russian forces were able to fire from these positions directly into the Ukrainian forces moving through in the eastern direction. However, this is only because of the Ukrainian tactic to go towards Verbove instead of going further south. And in the case they were going further south, Robotini would still be important. But again, this is nothing compared to actual cities like Tokmak, Melitopol, Verdiansk and so on where there is actual tactical significance for this offensive, for this war. Because nothing goes through Robotene. This is just a frontline village where its only importance is in the locality. There's no bigger importance. It's just a local important thing for the direct fights from an operational perspective. In the grand scheme of things, this is nothing. It's just a small village with a pre-war population of about 400. He then goes on to say we could have gone around it, he said, speaking to AFP in an area near the front line. We love big announcements, quick victories, the reality is different, said the commander who used the call sign, Mora, which means Marine. Here I seriously question his judgment because going around it doesn't really give them any positive things. Sure, Robotin itself is very vulnerable, but so is the areas around it. It is no different than them. So going around them would essentially just be to skip the fortifications 
And yes, they could have just gone straight for Verbove. However, that would require them for going further eastwards and going from this northern direction instead of going southwards towards Rogatene. But that is not something they can decide after they have moved southwards for two months. This is a failure on the tactical perspective in the sense that the Ukrainian and Western intelligence have not reported properly exactly what would go and happen here because they were essentially too positive and too optimistic about how the offensive would go. If they knew it would be this terrible, they would definitely not have gone through and straight ahead facing in a face of against the Russian defenses, which in itself just shows how delusional this whole planning was because they were expecting to go all the way down to the Azov Sea with this offensive. So whoever planned this is completely delusional. He then goes on to say death 100%. He said his men are not still able to move freely around the area because of Russian fire, even though they hold the territory, calling it a gray zone. At dawn, small groups of soldiers could be seen advancing through coppices that dot the area to attack Russian positions. On the day that AFP reporters visited, they were deployed on the outskirts of the next village along Novokopivka, two or three kilometers away. Moving by day means death, 100% Coral said. Every time there's shelling, there are victims, we lose men. So there's a lot of shelling on the Ukrainian positions, and in the daytime, it is much easier to detect these soldiers moving through these fields compared to the nighttime. And that is why he's saying this about 100% death rate if they move through the day because they are almost guaranteed or in this case they are guaranteed to be spotted and guaranteed to be shot if they move through the daytime so they mostly move through the nighttime and then in the daytime the russian drones fly around to try to detect their new positions to bombard them with new strikes of artillery and that is going to be all for this update thank you all for watching and have a great day